Good afternoon. My name is Mark Eccleston and I'm the Business Development Director for Volition. I'm going to present our latest data on the use of circulating nucleosome biomarkers to help in the early identification of PCR-positive SARS-CoV-2 patients likely to develop more severe COVID-19 disease. So this is not a diagnostic application per se, but a prognostic that we think will be valuable in the management of COVID-19 patients. Volition is a US-listed diagnostics company, although our main development lab, shown here, is based in Belgium alongside our new manufacturing facility. We've also recently set up a research unit in California. Our primary focus is in cancer screening, and whilst we're developing frontline screening solutions in a range of cancers, our initial products will be focused on triaging groups who screen positive by current approaches, such as FIT in colorectal cancer, or low-dose CT in lung cancer, where there are high degrees of false positives. The idea is to improve the identification of those at high risk of cancer, allowing prioritisation for treatment. Similarly, we have an aid to diagnosis for certain blood cancers that was recently CE marked. In the framework of the current pandemic, we saw an opportunity to apply our nucleosomics technology for stratifying COVID-19 patients who may just experience fever or mild respiratory symptoms from those who will go on to develop more severe complications like acute respiratory distress syndrome. Our nucleosomics technology platform is based on nucleosome quantitative immunoassays, or NUQ, which we can use to generate disease-associated epigenetic profiles based on nucleosomes released into circulation by dying cells. Nucleosomes are the basic packaging unit for DNA in the cell, and they're made up of eight histone proteins with DNA coiled around in a beads-on-a-string configuration. We've built a range of simple, low-cost immunoassays targeting specific features on the nucleosome, such as modifications to the DNA or histone proteins, sequence variants of the histone proteins, or complexes between the nucleosomes and other proteins. This is illustrated in the figure. Each assay consists of an immobilized target-specific antibody, as well as a label detection antibody, in this case configured for chemiluminescence readout. In cancer, nucleosomes are mainly released from the tumour by apoptosis, and this is against the background of healthy nucleosomes released by normal turnover of white blood cells. In the case of viral infection, cell death and nucleosome release can occur due to viral replication and budding, damaged peripheral tissues like the lungs and kidneys in COVID-19, as well as cells involved in the immune response. Neutrophils represent the largest fraction of white cells and undergo a process called natosis, where neutrophil extracellular traps are released rapidly in response to pathogen invasion as part of the innate immune response. The neutrophils are recruited by chemical signaling, for example interleukin-8, and can undergo natosis via a rapid vital process, which takes place in less than an hour, or a slightly slower lytic pathway over around four hours. Both processes involve decondensation of chromatin and assembly with granular enzymes, which ultimately immobilize and neutralize the pathogens. The decondensation process is associated with changes to the underlying nucleosome structure. Natosing neutrophils can also release interleukin-8 to call for backup, which can potentially lead to a positive feedback loop and there's growing evidence that misregulation of this process can lead to a cytokine storm associated with several diseases, including sepsis and acute respiratory distress, as seen in COVID-19. Host-directed neutopathy can result from misdirected enzymatic activity, and as the nets degrade, releasing nucleosomes, exposure to toxic histone proteins can cause further damage. It's also possible for the nets to inadvertently capture T-cells, further depleting the immune system. This can lead to hypercoagulation and sepsis-like multi-organ failure. Individuals with underlying inflammatory conditions can have overactivated neutrophils with increased risk of catastrophic neutopathy, which may explain more serious COVID-19 disease. We're using our NUQ assays to track neutosis and neutopathy and potentially allow earlier intervention to reset this process. We've carried out two trials with retrospective samples collected at centres in Liège in Belgium and Munich in Germany. In the Liège cohort, shown here in the top left data set, SARS-CoV-2 patients with confirmed severe acute respiratory syndrome showed a trend towards increased nucleosome levels compared to SARS-negative. In the Munich cohort, showed bottom left, patients were split according to disease severity based on the hospital ward they were in. There was a clear trend towards increased nucleosome levels in patients admitted to intensive care. 
Nucleosome levels can result from viral replication and cell budding, bystander netopathic events, apoptosis of T-cells and neutrophils, as well as being associated with circulating nets or their degradation products. When we examine citrullinated nucleosomes, which are more indicative of intact or degraded nets, the Liège cohort showed a less clear distinction between SARS-positive and SARS-negative groups. However, in the Munich cohort, the trend towards increased levels in ICU is maintained. This is consistent with the more advanced stage of the Munich cohorts and may reflect the fact that circulating nucleosomes in the Liège cohort are primarily due to nets, or their degradation products, whereas in the Munich cohort, a significant amount of cell death also appears to contribute non-citrullinated nucleosomes into circulation. Whilst nucleosome levels appear to correlate with disease severity, we now need to confirm prognostic power in longitudinal cohorts. In terms of next steps, we have a number of ongoing trials. The first thing will be evaluation of prognostic potential in retrospective longitudinal cohorts with our Belgian clinical partners, as well as a new partner in the UK. We're also organising a number of prospective longitudinal collections in the EU and US and we hope to be in a position to see mark the prognostic test in time for this wave of the pandemic. We're also intending to seek regulatory approval in the US. Thank you very much for listening. My contact details are on this slide for anyone interested in collaborating not only on this COVID-19 prognostic programme, but any other disease indications where netopathy might be involved.